Let me have your attention, please. I call the drainage district meeting of the Board of Directors to order. We'll start with a roll call. I, I want to announce that uh, Commissioner Fuentes will not be with us here today. One of his family members tested positive for COVID, so he'll be joining us through, uh, through uh, video. We'll start the roll call with Precinct 2. Commissioner, Commissioner Fuentes is online. Okay. Yes, good morning. David Fuentes, Precinct 1. Thank you, Judge. Eddie County, Precinct 2. Everardo Villarreal, Precinct 3. Richard Cortez, County Judge, that constitutes a quorum. Mr. Sassine, uh, or I'm sorry, Jaime. No Would problem, Judge. Lead, good morning, yeah, Judge. Please lead us in prayer. Yes, sir. Dear Lord, we thank you for another beautiful day with our families and with our work. We thank you for your promises of love and protection. Lord, inspire us today with the qualities of good leadership, give insight to make wise decisions, integrity to face the truth, and courage to make difficult choices. Let us not forget that our job is to serve both you and others. I ask that you grant hope, health, and healing to families and individuals who are facing struggles and battling illnesses today. And may we each recognize every opportunity to pass your blessings on to others. All this in your name. Amen. 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 Did anyone sign up for open forum? Mr. Lopez, no. Do we have any participants for drainage district? Uh, okay. No, sir. No one signed up for drainage open forum. Thank you. Let the record show the commissioner told us, just joined us. Um, we have the approval of the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 5A. Thank you, Judge. Requesting authority to advertise and approval of request for qualifications packet, including qualification requirements and scope of services attached here to for Hidalgo County Drainage District Number One, Pool of Professional Services for the following Professional Engineering Services, RFQ Number AC DD1 21005020202 RFB, and Surveying Services, RFQ Number AC DD1 21006020202 RFB. For selection of firms per project on an as needed basis through grading, scoring, ranking, negotiation protocol as established by Hidalgo County Drainage District Number One Board of Directors. This is for our yearly uh, RFQs. Second. We have a motion to second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Requesting approval to accept CSP response and award a negotiated construction contract to the highest ranked contractor meeting all specified requirements. Castle Enterprises LLP for CSP number ACDD1 21050120 RB Drainage Area Improvements for Wide Drain Phase 1, Tower Road between Rogers and Monte Cristo and Curry Drain and Valverde Road Crossing in the amount of $837,721.04 as approved for negotiations by the Board of Directors on Agenda Item 83996 on December 28, 2021, subject to legal review and compliance with HB 1295. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Pursuant to Texas Legislative Code 262031 and in the interest of expediting a project's progress, requesting authority and approval for Drainage District General Manager Raul Sassin to execute change orders that involve an increase or decrease in cost of 50000 or less in no event to exceed the change order statutory limits. The original contract price may not be decreased by 18% or more without consent of the contractor. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. 2018 bond referendum project discussion and approval by Hidalgo County Green District Number One of resolution recognizing the necessity of acquiring easements or rights of right of of right away or fee title in connection with the construction of B1813 Hidalgo Drain Project in Hidalgo County, Texas, and authorizing the acquisition of said easements or rights of way or fee title described in the resolution that exhibits thereto by condemnation, eminent domain, or otherwise. Single vote shall apply to all units of property described in said resolution. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Requesting approval to accept CSP response and award a negotiated construction contract to the highest ranked contractor meeting all specified requirements. More well LLC for CSP number 8CDB1 21054. 1208 MSS mile 9 and SM 1015 package uh, 1B improvements 
2018 bond referendum project 24 in the amount of three million five hundred four thousand three hundred sixty dollars and seventy seven cents as approved for negotiation by the board of directors on agenda item number eight three nine nine eight on december 28 2021 subject to legal review and tcd 1295. so moved second. second all in favor say aye aye, aye. motion carries Pursuant to Texas Legislative Code 262031, and in the interest of expediting the project's progress, requesting authority and approval for Drainage District General Manager Mr. Raul Sassin to execute change orders that involve an increase or decrease in a cost of 50000 or less and in no event to exceed change order statutory limits. The original contract price may not be decreased by 18% or more without consent of the contractor. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Requesting approval of supplemental number one to the Professional Engineering Services Contract C HDD 1-19-007-0409 with Happen Associates for the Project Mile 9 North and FM 1015 2018 Bond Referendum Project 24 to reflect the revised Exhibit D work schedule with the extended termination date of October 4, 2024. Subject to legal review and compliance with Tone Right Five. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And to requesting approval of supplemental agreement to work authorization number one of the Professional Engineering Services Contract ACDD 1-19-007-0409 with Happen Associates for the Project Mile 9 North and FM 1015 2018 Bond Referendum Project 24 to reflect the revised period of service to end on October 4, 2024, subject to review and compliance with HB 1295. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, approval of application for payment number one in the amount of $237,547.50 from Science Brother Construction, uh, reviewed and approved by LNG Engineering. Motion so, to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, approval of application payment number four in the amount of $223,821 from Science Brothers Construction, uh, reviewed by Mr. Javier Hinojosa Engineering. All is in order. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, discussion approval of all personnel actions approved after budget adoption date of September 28, 2021. If I can read these collectively, Judge Commissioners. Uh, approval of budget amendment to the District General Fund, a decrease of 26539 from admin budget 003 and a budget amendment increase of 41122.57 from MNO budget 006 and approval of revised salary schedule. Um, so these were the changes that we made during the after the budget for our engineers and our assistant uh, general managers. Uh, second. Judging commission. We have a motion and a second. And that's for A1, 2, and 3? Or, or yes, sir. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Requesting approval of closing documents for parcel six as it relates to the Texas FM 1925 Monte Cristo Road Expansion Project and authority for chairman of the board to execute documents. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Requesting approval of possession and use agreement between Texas and Hidalgo County Drainage Division Number One as it relates to the Texas FM 1925 Monte Cristo Road Expansion Project and authority for the chairman of the board to execute documents. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Do we need to go to closed session? No, sir. That's all I have, Judge. Okay. I believe that concludes all of our agenda items, but I have a motion to adjourn. Motion made. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. We'll be back at 10. Thank you all. Have a great day. Good morning, everyone. I call the Commissioner's Court meeting to order. We will start with a roll call to establish quorum. We'll start with Commissioner Fuentes, who could not be here with us physically, but he's with us through video, with the Zoom. See there? Eddie Cantu, Precinct 2. Everardo Villarreal, Precinct 3. Ellie Torres, Precinct 4. Richard Cortez, County Judge, that constitutes a quorum. As is customary, we have one of our veterans help us with giving the our, our oath, our, our Pledge of Allegiance. We have today Robert Castaneda. He works for us here in the in the county. He served as a U.S. Army Sergeant in the 81 millimeter motor platoon during the Vietnam era. Sergeant, would you please lead us in prayer? I mean, in our pledge.
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant, and thank you for your service. Today is also the first meeting that we have of the new year, and it's customary for us to ask the religious group to come forward and, and lead us in, in prayer to give us the guidance that we need to, to have a successful year. So today we have Pastor Juan de la Garza as a delegation of other people joining us to help us in prayer to lead us in the right direction this coming year. Pastor? Well, good morning, Judge, and good morning, Commissioners. Uh, thank you for the opportunity that you give us today so that we can pray together with all of you. Uh, before I pray, the judge asked me to give a few thoughts, and I'm going to share that with you. In the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verses 14 and 15, the Bible says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins. And also, the last part says, and I will heal their land. I will heal their land. Amen. Prayer has played a, a very important role in our country every time we go through a crisis. I was reminded this week as I was uh, re, uh, asked to come and be with you today, I was reminded of 9-11. Uh, Who can forget that occasion? I remember prayer played a very, very important role. All the way from the White House to the last house here in the valley, people were praying. And guess what happened? God healed our land. And people came back again with confidence and believed in God again. So prayer was a very, played a very important role. Then I remember the war in Iraq in 2003. Again, prayer made the difference. Uh, I remember the country being divided in so many ways, but yet when people prayed, the people and the country came together. I was also remembering uh, December 26, 2004. The world was shaking again. If you all remember, we had an earthquake uh, we call it the Indian Ocean earthquake, 230,000 people died. And again, every country was asked to pray. And we came together, and we prayed, and there was healing. 2005, Hurricane Katrina, 80% of New Orleans was flooded. And I remember, like as if it was today, people not only praying, but helping. Every country, every city, every state, came together, and they went out to help. I'm talking all the way from religious organizations to every organization that we had in the country. They came back, and they prayed, and we saw uh, answers there. Our challenge today is COVID-19. It's a huge uh, challenge. Thousands of people have died, and uh, not only here in the Valley, but the state and the nation and the world. And... Uh, what do you do when you don't know what to do? I mean, what do you do when you don't know what to do? I think the answer is you pray. Right now, it's very hard to detect. Everywhere we move, we hear about COVID-19. So what do you do when you don't know what to do? I think the answer is to pray and believe in God because if God did it yesterday, he's going to do it again. If there was an answer yesterday, there's going to be an answer today. I will close with a quote from Pastor Robert Schuller. He wrote a book, and he named it, Tough Times Don't Last, Tough People Do. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. And here I want to say, Judge, Commissioners, thank you for everything that you do in this county. I know it's been tough for all of you, and it's been tough for the mayors, it's been tough for every community in this valley, 
but you've stood there, you're there with answers sometimes, and sometimes you don't have the answers. But I want to say thank you for walking the second mile, because that's what Jesus would do. He walked the second mile every time there was an issue. Every time there was a need, he walked the second mile. And I've seen uh, all of you, Everardo Villarreal, he's from our prison, and I see him every single day walking the second mile. Commissioner, thank you so much. I know that most of the people can say the same thing about everybody that is here. And Judge, I've seen you walk the second mile. Thank you for that. That's what Jesus would do if he was t here today. He would walk the second mile. So at this time, I would like to pray, and I would like to ask everybody to please bow your heads. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. As we start a new year, we need your wisdom, your knowledge, and your leading. I lift before you our county, our, our county judge, Richard Cortez, and our county commissioners, that hand by hand, Father, they battle unexpected challenges every single day, and this has been like never before. Father, we've seen fear, we've seen unrest, we've seen pains in the lives of many, pain that only you can heal, and for that reason we come before you, asking with a humble heart for help. Your words, if my people, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal the land. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you'll heal our land. This morning, Father, as I ask these things, I ask them in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. amen. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you for those lovely words and lovely prayer. I think it's appropriate that we take a picture. We, we have to memorialize this morning. Uh, are you all ready? Next item on the agenda is your approval of the consent agenda. Are there any items to be pulled? Yes, sir, Judge. Uh, if I, with your permission, I'd like to pull from consent agenda, consent agenda items 13A, 1 and 2, 14F3, and 14H2. Make a motion to approve the rest of the consent. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 
Judge Commissioners, for the record, uh, Commissioner Fuentes will be abstaining from any discussion and or action uh, with respect to consent agenda item 13A, 1 and 2. Motion approved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Let the record show that Commissioner Fuentes abstained from voting on items 13A, 1 and 2. Judge Commissioners, uh, consent agenda item 14F3 for the record. The revised certificate of insurance uh, will be attached and sent out to the appropriate departments uh, as well as the auditor's office. I have a motion to that effect. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. And the last uh, consent agenda item, Judge Commissioners, consent agenda item 14H2 to, for the record, uh, the correct uh, sequence of numbers is C-21-219-02-2. Can I have a motion with that motion? Motion, uh, motion approved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge. Thank Commissioner. you very much. Next item is open forum. Mr. Lopez, do we have anybody for open forum? Uh, yes, sir. We have two people. Okay. First is Dr. Andrea Valdez. The Dr. second will be Dolores Del Rio. All right. Doctor, there is a three minute time limit. I will advise when there is one minute and I will start when you start. Yes, sir. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. Dr. Andrea Valdez, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. Uh, we are here today to talk about Walk Your Dog Month that is observed in the month of January. And the small act of walking your dog can have multiple health benefits, not just for your pet, but for you as well. In 2017, the Association of Pet Obesity Prevention stated that 56% of dogs in the U.S. were obese. Regular walks and exercise may help control your dog's weight and limit the chances of them becoming obese. The Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service would like to remind everyone to use this month not only to walk your dog, but be physically active for yourself. CountyHealthRankings.org reports that Hidalgo County has a 38% adult obesity rate and that the average number of days per month that adults feel mentally unhealthy is 4.3. Walking for yourself and for your pet may help lower both these statistics as walking is a low impact beginner fitness activity and research shows that walking in nature can boost your mood, promote cognitive benefits and your overall mental health. To promote Walk Your Dog Month and our own physical and mental health, the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service is partnering with Hidalgo County Judge Richard Cortez to offer the first ever Pause at the Park event on Saturday, February 5th, 2022 at Bill Shoe Park in McAllen at 8.30 a.m. Join us for a dog walk, doggy photo contest, healthy dog treat recipe, and much more. The dog photo contest opens on Thursday, January 15th at 10 a.m. on the Hidalgo County Judges page, and every dog that crosses the finish line will receive a doggy bandana that was handmade with love, like this, uh, from our very own Master Clothing Volunteer Group. And today we have Ms. Joanne Uesta, one of our county extension agents, and the volunteers that so lovingly made all these doggy bandanas so that everyone can um, enjoy, get out, and walk your dog and be physically active. So we hope everyone can join us for this fun event. Unfortunately, we can't comment, but. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Our second presenter, Mr. Lopez. Uh, second presenter is Dolores Del Rio. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Leo. There is a three minute time limit. I will advise when there is one minute left and I will start when you start. Thank you. Um, it's a new year and before I start, I have to ask your forgiveness. I speak with a humble heart. Um, before I retired, I was part of a team that managed labor, union, non-union, volunteer labor. And it seems to me that other than love, your labor is the most precious thing that you can offer. And my question for you folks is who do you think you work for? As public servants, starting the year right. because I can congratulate you for presiding over the most corrupt county in the great state of Texas. So again, you know, in the management 
you, you all are paid non-union labor, and you work for us, for all of us. So it seems to me that your job is to prudently administrate the massive funds and, you know, you have a lot of internal and external stress. I can only mm -hmm. imagine in these last two years the extraordinary trauma that it has been for you in this time of the black magic virus and the alien invasion of our borders. How many external forces would wish to demonize you? That's not my goal here. What I would wish to do is generate some moral imagination and competence to lower our taxes, for one. One minute. Thank you. So with that, I'm going to come back and check on you. But, you know, Christmas time is a time for remembrance, where we remember our dearly beloved past. And uh, one of my dear friends, Dick Emmett, served in the Alabama court as a district court. He had Martin Luther King in his courtroom a couple of times. And he's famously said the most dangerous person is a victim. So I just want to ask you, if you are being victimized by anyone, intimidated, coerced, asked to do things that morally you don't find any standing for, that you will have your back. Yeah? So best of all, I'll be back to check on you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Lopez? Uh, that was all, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Hidalgo County is very blessed with many talented people, many people that serve our communities. So it always, always gives us great pleasure to recognize those that have reached a very high achievement. Today, we're very proud to present a proclamation to one of our best. Uh, doctor, you want to come on over? So who's, who's going to read the, uh, the proclamation? Good morning, Judge, Commissioner. The man with the magic voice. Okay. Because <laughs> I can't have the magic face. I'll very, take the voice. Very appropriate. Very appropriate. <laughs> we stepped before you today. Uh, last month, you'll remember, we recognized our teacher of the state of Texas year. And um, we did not get the opportunity to recognize our superintendent of the year because that was done when we were holding the meetings virtually. So we come before you today to recognize Dr. Jose A. Gonzalez, the 2020 Texas Association of School Board Officials Superintendent of the Year. And I would like to read the proclamation that was originally done in October of 2020, if you would be, allow me. Whereas Dr. Jose A. Gonzalez was named Texas Superintendent of the Year by the Texas Association of School Boards in a virtual announcement during the 2020 annual TASA TASB convention held in Austin, Texas. And whereas, as the first winner ever from McAllen ISD and a veteran educator of 25 years who has worked his way up the ladder being a teacher, assistant principal, principal, then associate superintendent for instructional leadership before becoming McAllen ISD superintendent in 2016, over the years, he has demonstrated strong skills in educational consulting, classroom management, lesson planning, educational systems, and instructional design, and Whereas born in Laredo, Dr. Gonzalez was raised in Hebronville. He graduated from Texas A&M University Kingsville with a Bachelor of Science degree in 1996, earned a Master's of Science degree in Educational Administration from the University of Texas Pan American in 1999, and between 2000 and 2003 earned his Mid-Management Administrator and Superintendent certifications. His doctorate of education with an emphasis in educational leadership was completed in 2008 through the University of Texas Pan American. And whereas Dr. Gonzalez is married to Sheru T. Gonzalez, 
also an educator, sharing a household family with three children, Joe Douglas, Samantha Isabella, and Joshua J. And whereas having been a great role model to his family, community, and McAllen ISD students, Dr. Gonzalez states, I am fascinated with the art of teaching and learning. We all have a particular learning style, and it is our job as educators to help our students discover their talents and to build on their natural skill sets. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court honored Dr. Jose A. Gonzalez for his distinguished recognition as Texas Superintendent of the Year by proclaiming October 22nd, Dr. J. A. Gonzalez Day and applauds his educational service towards McAllen ISD for having led the transformation of March 2020 in addressing COVID-19's pandemic impact that kept instruction at the forefront while keeping students and staff safe. And this was approved on the sixth day of October 2020. Uh, most of you approved it and we appreciate you allowing us to come back and formally present it to Dr. Gonzalez. So I will turn the microphone over to him for a few words, thank you. Well, first and foremost, I want to say thank you, Judge Commissioners, for taking time to, to recognize uh, us. And I say us because this takes a, a team effort. Anytime you're competing at, at the, the level of the state and accomplishing things that, uh, that are commendable, it doesn't happen in isolation. So without the support of the county, without the support of the city, without the support of the entire administration, the McAllen ISD, our tremendous school board, our family, our students, it's just everybody coming together and that's what makes this award so special. Yeah. Ever since I was just a boy, I wanted to be a superintendent, so this is a dream for me to be before you all today. And uh, on behalf of my family, I wanna say thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your service and you know, we, we appreciate it. You're, you're gonna have to help them know a little bit about, about you. I didn't hear them say how great of a fisherman you are and your <laughs> wife is, but uh, maybe next time. <laughs> Judge, I'd like to take this opportunity to also plug in that the McAllen ISD board is a finalist for the HEB Excellence Award, and we'll be finding out about that uh, in the near future. So we may have another resolution coming up. Really Hopefully soon. there'll be two, because not only has our school board been recognized as an Excellence in Education nominee, but our entire district of McAllen ISD has also been recognized by HEB as an Excellence in Education nominee. So we look forward to May when those are announced. Fantastic. Awesome. Absolutely. Let's Congratulations. We'll come back to the next item, but I want to go ahead and go to item 7A, the district attorney's office. We have a proclamation also to uh, present.
Good morning, Judge Commissioners. It's just going to be a moment. We're just waiting on one more organization. Absolutely. We've got, we've got time. We're ready. Misty Palacios with Hidalgo County Public Affairs. You, you want to get it closer to you, Misty? Is that better? I think, I think it was better. Okay. I'm going to be assisting with item 84037, National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month Proclamation. Whereas National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month provides an opportunity for Hidalgo County to renew our commitment in combating human trafficking in all its forms. And whereas human trafficking imposes progression of our societal development, fuels violence and organized crime, and disparages our common humanity, and whereas human trafficking is a global adversary, combating it requires international, national, state and local action. According to the International Labor Organization, there are an estimated 40.3 million victims of human trafficking worldwide. The United States recognizes, the United Nations, excuse me, recognizes that as many as 124 million more individuals are experiencing extreme poverty due to the pandemic, leaving, excuse me, leaving them, excuse me, leaving them susceptible to human trafficking. And whereas the human the Hidalgo County Criminal District Attorney's Office is working with national, state, regional, and local stakeholders to fight against human trafficking and provide assistance to victims of human trafficking. And whereas the Hidalgo County Criminal District Attorney's Office is hereby dedicated to strengthening victims in the aftermath of crime by allowing the victims' voices to lead the way, which in turn builds resilience in our communities and victim responders and contributes to justice for all victims and survivors. And whereas we must join together as a community in Hidalgo County to provide imperative refuge by protecting victims and holding exploiters accountable through prosecution. With the unified actions of the community and victims guidance alike, risk factors and patterns will be addressed. Victim identification and protection will increase. Justice and recovery will prevail and proactive measures of human trafficking prevention will be taken. The men, women, and children who have suffered this oppression can overcome the bonds of modern slavery, receive protection and justice, and successfully reclaim their inherent human right of independence. And whereas the Rio Grande Valley Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force calls on every single person in our community to report human trafficking and join prevention efforts. Now therefore be it proclaimed that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court hereby declares January 2022 as National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month in Hidalgo County. Approve this 11th day of January 2022. Motion approved. Second. We have, have a motion to second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much for your <laughs> Judge Commissioners, I'd like to introduce our District Attorney, Ricardo Rodriguez, Jr. <coughs> Judge, good morning, commissioners. Good morning to, to all of you. Good, good morning as well, and to my favorite lawyer. Good morning as well, Josie. Um, thank you for all the great work you guys do. I appreciate that. Uh, I know that it's, it's difficult, right, with the positions that we hold, and, and we try to do the best that we can, you know, with what we have and, and comply with our responsibilities. So, so thank you for everything you all do. And not only, you know, thank you for that, but always thank you for, your, for supporting our great efforts. Uh, we're, we're celebrating and we're bringing prevention awareness uh, to human trafficking, which is very important to, to all of us here at the DA's office. And as you can see, to many other individuals who are here with us today, um, there's different components um, in the sense of um, working and, and doing prevention awareness, for example, in human trafficking itself and so many other things that we do. But we have law enforcement here. Uh, I want to take the time to thank them and, and, and tell them 
you know, thank you for your public service. You know, I know we're celebrating a, a law enforcement appreciation week and, you know, thank you for everything that you do. But they're a big part of the work that's involved, you know, for example, in human trafficking. Um, they do great investigations and they're doing the best that they can to be ready uh, with knowledge and expertise in tackling and combating human trafficking. So thank you for that. Uh, then you have uh, agencies that work with victim services that are here as well. And that's another component, which we thank those individuals who do a good job in providing you know, those different uh, victim services that are so badly needed. Uh, I thank our staff that are here with us as well on the prosecution aspect of it, which is very important as well. Um, so it, it takes this team to be able to move forward uh, and being able to protect our communities, our families, our neighbors, you know, our friends. Uh, and, and again, you guys have been a big part of that, so thank you. Um, I have with me uh, Clarissa Castaneda, who's done a good job of putting all this together. Uh, you know, everyone that you see here, she had something to do with that. And I, I'm going to let her talk to the public a little bit about human trafficking. And, and, and she is one of our, our victim advocates as well. <coughs> Good morning. My name is Clarissa Castaneda, and I am a court advocate with the Hidalgo County Criminal District Attorney's Office. On behalf of our office, I would like to thank the I would like to thank the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court and Judge Cortez for allowing us together today and recognizing the significance of human trafficking awareness and preventative efforts. Human trafficking is a crime of exploitation and coercion with no respect for any man, woman, or child. These traffickers disregard the inherent human right of independence and often mislead victims with false promises of better opportunities. The pandemic has created a growing number of people experiencing economic and social vulnerabilities, which in turn has exacerbated the risks of, for vulnerable and marginalized populations. According to the University of Texas School of Social Work, there is a statewide prevalence of 313,000 human trafficking victims in Texas alone, with one-fourth of those victims being minors. While it is our government's responsibility to make serious and sustained efforts to eliminate trafficking in persons, all agencies and community members must be involved in making Hidalgo County a safer place for victims and survivors of human trafficking. Our office has partnered with the Office of the Attorney of the Texas Governor for the Can You See Me campaign, which has raised awareness in Hidalgo County of human trafficking indicators and an increase in victim identification. <coughs> Our office has also collaborated with the Texas Human Trafficking Prevention Task Force by educating the public to recognize human trafficking, identifying and directing victims to services, and ensuring traffickers are effectively investigated and prosecuted. We must remain vi vigilant and continue protecting human trafficking victims by reporting suspected cases of human trafficking. Indicators for human trafficking victims include appearing malnourished, showing signs of physical abuse, avoiding eye contact, social interaction, and law enforcement, responding in a rehearsed manner, and lacking personal possessions and identification documents. The Hidalgo County Criminal District Attorney's Office Victims Unit remains committed to assisting all victims, including those of human trafficking. Please do not hesitate to contact our office at 956-292-7616, where we have advocates ready to assist victims and their needs. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. We also have, from the Texas Department of Public Safety, we have Captain Manuel Quilintan. Quilintan. I always, sorry, I, with, with Cap. I chop it up sometimes, Cap, but good. thank you for being here. It just depends where you're at. Austin is Quilantan, and here in the Valley is Quilantan, so. <laughs> Judge, commissioners, good morning. Um, my name is Manny Quilantan. On behalf of the Texas Department of Public Safety, Criminal Investigations Division. I am one of three captains here in the RGV. Uh, I would like to thank the District Attorney's Office for allowing me to be invited and uh, have the opportunity to speak. DPS has implemented a human trafficking program for a direction of the state's 
enforcement e uh, efforts against human trafficking in Texas. The human trafficking program we have focuses in working with local, state, and federal agencies to identify, investigate, disrupt, and dismantle major human trafficking, trafficking organizations. The department uses a victim-centered approach to combat human trafficking, placing an equal importance and value on the identification, recovery, and safety of the victims in addition to investigating and prosecuting. A victim-centered approach is essential to accomplishing the department's mission. As victims who can tell their story and testify as witnesses are very vital to the success in human trafficking investigations and prosecutions. DPS continues to make awareness through our training. The Interdiction for the Protection of Children, or known as IPC, was launched in 2009. This is a DPS program designed to teach troopers and other law enforcement officers on how to recognize indicators of endangered children who do not exhibit those signs of abuse or neglect. This program offers an invaluable and sophisticated training to create to assist law enforcement officers in identifying and rescuing missing, exploited, at-risk children. Arresting suspects who harm or endanger children reporting suspicious activity is also being taught for officers on how to report that. Our department goals and strategies for this coming 2022 is to continue to work with and actively collaborate with the local, state, and federal law enforcement partner partners. This is to include our district attorney's office, the Children's Advocacy Center, the non-government organizations, the Department of Family Protective Services, and the Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force of Hidalgo County. And as well with the multidisciplinary teams, which is called MDT, which is the Child Sex Trafficking Team with the Office of the Governor. DPS will continue to strive to identify and rescue human trafficking victims, identify and arrest human traffickers and purchasers, and dismantle human trafficking organizations. So on behalf of DPS, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Judge, commissioners, I know we take, a, take up a lot of your time, but I, I just want to make sure that the public understands, you know, what we're doing and, and get as, as much information as they can. Uh, one last person that we have here is Rio Grande Valley Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force, and uh, we have our former uh, crime victims coordinator, Rosie Martinez, who has a message as well. Good morning, uh, judge, commissioners. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the Rio Grande Valley Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force, we want to thank you for your continued support. And most importantly, also, we want to recognize and thank Mr. Ricardo Rodriguez, our district attorney. Um, I stood by him here six years ago when we started our mission to address human trafficking in Hidalgo County. Although our task force was formed about 10 years ago, if we wouldn't have had the support and the direction of Mr. Rodriguez, we wouldn't have been able to accomplish everything that we have. Um, so we want, we want to make sure that he gets a special recognition on behalf of our task force for his continued support and work. And we understand that, you know, he has a year left, but his position or title does not make him the great advocate he is. And I can honestly tell you that he will continue being involved in this because he has a passion for this. So thank you, Mr. Rodriguez, for everything that you did uh, for our task force and also to everybody that's here that's uh, a member of the Rio Grande Valley Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force, we thank you for your great work. Um, despite COVID and everything that's been happening, their services and investigation and prosecution has not stopped. And so we are grateful to be able to continue with this team and hope that this next year we continue our work with the Office of the Governor of Texas because our task force is uh, also part of their legislative committee. So we're there representing our county and also our state when it comes to dismantling and disrupting human trafficking. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, Judge Commissioners, thank you very much for your time and thank you for all your efforts and your support. And again, I want to thank everyone uh, who joined us today, uh, especially those that are here with us. So thank you again and God, God bless you. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you.
first, if y'all could stand over here. Out of Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Stand over there. <coughs> Yes, sir. Thank you, Judge. to item 6B. Basically, this is this is our annual contribution to the VITA program for them continuing to train our people. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 8A, Human Resources. Good morning and Happy New Year, Judge Commissioners. Eddie Carreno from the Department of Human Resources. Item 8A, I'm requesting a waiver of the following is applicable for the personnel items listed. I need action on item number three, the budget amendment policy, personnel related amendments. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Item 8B for facilities management, approve the following personnel action effective upon commissioner's court approval. This is to create a utility plant manager at a grade 12, and it is for the new courthouse plant. Uh, item 8B2, approval to revise the classified position list to add the new position title of utility plant manager at a grade 12. I do recommend approval. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. Item 8C for the health department from various grant funds, approve the following personnel actions effective the next full pay period, January 17, 2022. This is to delete the positions as listed and it is due to grant funding ending. I do recommend approval. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 8D from the ARPA fund, approval to create the following time limited positions effective upon commissioner's court approval. I'm requesting to create slot 0023, a grants accounting supervisor at 59,585. And this is for the auditor's office. This position will be reviewing all payments and will ensure reporting compliance as well. I do recommend approval. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 8E for CSA uh, from the CSBG and CUP grant funding. Approval of the following personnel action effective upon commissioner's court approval. I'm requesting to create slot 0094 and eligibility worker 3 at 32,500 and two eligibility worker one twenty-seven thousand one eighty-seven with the slots as listed. 
This positions will be assisting CSA with various grant programs. I do recommend approval. Motion approved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> Thank you. Aye. Next item, item 9A. Uh, good morning, Judge Commissioners. For item 9A, subject to compliance with House Bill 1295, the Irving County program is requesting consideration and action to award and then to enter into a construction contract with RG Enterprise LLC uh, doing business as GNG contractors. The lowest responsible bidder in the amount of $102,200 utilizing CDBG DR uh, 2015 GLO funding. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. For 9B, subject to compliance with House Bill 295, the Irving County program is requesting consideration and action to award and enter into a construction contract with RG Enterprise LLC, DBA, G&G contractors, the lowest responsible bidder in the amount of $99,100 utilizing CDBG DR GLO 2015 funding. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. For 9C, subject to compliance with House Bill 1295, the Irving County program is requesting consideration and action to award and enter into construction contract with RG Enterprise LLC, DBA, G&G contractors, the lowest responsible bidder in the amount of 100,100 100, utilizing CDBG DR GLO 2015 funding. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And for item 90, uh, one, the Irving County program is requesting county commissioners board approval for the following civil right requirements for the Texas Community Development Block Grant 2015 Flood State Mitigation Competition Grant administered under the Community Development and Revitalization Program 2015 MIT contract number 22-083-004-2015. D209 for A, uh, Section 3, uh, Local Opportunity Plan, B, Excessive Force Policy, C, the Section 504 Policy Against Discrimination Based on Handicap and Grievance Procedures, D, Fair Housing Policy, and E, the Code of Conduct. Motion approved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. For item 9D2, consideration and approval of resolution regarding civil rights for the Texas CDBG 2015 Flood State Mitigation Competition Grant 2015 Mitigation Contract number 22083004D209. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Three, consideration and approval to authorize the county judge to sign any and all contractual documents associated with the aforementioned policies, procedures, resolution as required by the Texas General Land Office. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. For 9E1, the Irving County program is requesting commissioners court consideration and approval to appoint the UCP director as a civil rights section 504 standard equal opportunity fair housing officer to ensure compliance for the following. The non-discrimination requirements contained in the Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Texas General Land Office regulations implementing civil rights, the section 504 equal opportunity and fair housing <laughs> officers for the GLO Texas CDBG 2015 mitigation contract number 22083004 D209. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. For 9E2, UCP is requesting Commissioner's Court consideration and approval to appoint the UCP Director as a Labor Standards Officer and the Assistant Director as an alternate to ensure compliance for the following. The Texas General Land Office Regulations implement Implementation of the Davis-Bacon Labor Standards for the GLO uh, Texas CDBG 2015 mitigation contract 22083004 D209. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 9E3, the UCP is requesting commissioners court consideration and approval to appoint the UCP director as 
the Section 3 coordinator to ensure compliance for the following. The GLO regulations implementing Section 3 requirements for the GLO, Texas CDBG 2050 mitigation contracts number 22083-004-D209. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion aye. carries. And for item 9F, one, Durban County program is requesting County Commissioner's Court approval for the following civil rights requirements for the Texas Community Development Block Grant 2016 uh, Flood State Mitigation Competition Grant administered under the Texas General Land Office Community Development and Revitalization Program 2016 Mitigation Contract Number 22082005D200. For A, Section 3 Local Opportunity Plan, B, the Excessive Force Policy, C, Section 504 Policy Against Discrimination Based on Handicap and Grievance Procedures, D, Fair Housing Policy, and E, the Code of Conduct. Motion to approve. Motion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion aye. carries. For 9F2, consideration and approval of a resolution regarding civil rights for the Texas CDBG 2016 Flood State Mitigation Competition Grant, 2016 Mitigation Contract Number 22082005D200. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 9F3, consideration and approval to authorize the county judge to sign any and all contractual documents associated with the aforementioned policies, procedures, resolution as required by the General Land Office. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 9G1, the Irving County Program is requesting commissioners for consideration and approval to appoint the UCP Director of the Civil Rights Section 504 Standards Equal Opportunity Fair Housing Officer to ensure compliance for the following. The non-discrimination requirements contained in the Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Texas General Land Office regulations implementing Civil Rights Section 504 Equal Opportunity and Fair Housing Officers for the General Land Office Texas CDBG 2016 Mitigation Contract 22082005B200. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two, UCP is requesting commissioners for consideration and approval to appoint the UCP director as a labor standards officer and assistant director as an alternate to ensure compliance for the following. The general land office regulations implementing Davis Bacon labor standards for the general land office, uh, Texas CDBG 2016 mitigation contract 22082005B200. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item number three, <coughs> UCP is requesting commissioners for consideration and approval to appoint the UCP director as a section three coordinator to ensure compliance for the following. The general land office regulations implementing section three requirements for the general land office, Texas CDBG 2016 mitigation contract number 22082005B200. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And H1, requesting exception for competitive bidding requirements under the Texas Local Government Code 262.024A4 for professional engineering services. So moved. Second. second. We have a motion to second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And then 9H2, presentation to the scoring grid for purposes by ranking ranking by commissioner's court of at least three engineering firms for the counties from the county's approved pool as graded and evaluated by the city of Edcouch, uh, the urban county program and the Hidalgo County Purchase Department in connection with and funded through the Hidalgo County Urban County program year 2019 and 2021, the city of Edcouch water and sewer improvement funds with the professional services um, CS, CSJ Group at 88.67%, Terracon Consultants Inc. at 78.67%, and Ethos at 77%. So you'd like for me to rank them as ordered? So moved. Second. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Me, authority to negotiate professional engineering service contract with the number one ranked firm of CS, CSJ Group for the provision of engineering services for the Irving County program year 2019-2021 at City of Ed Couch water and sewer improvements projects. So moved. Second. We have a motion second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion aye. carries. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. And, and just real quick on, on those notes on the Texas General Land Office on the 2015 and 2016 mitigation funds, those are some of our startup documents that we need, uh, that we needed in order to go ahead and start the, the project for the, the County of Hidalgo. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. Mr. Olivares, Health and Human Services Department. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Eddie Olivares, Hidalgo County Health and Human Services. I have a few items today. Uh, item number 10A is requesting approval for Eduardo Olivares, Chief Administrative Officer of Hidalgo County Health Human Services to accept the designation as the Chair of the Task Force of Border Health Officials for the term of January 1st, 2022 through August 31st, 2023, and the authorization to travel to Austin for the meetings to be held during this term. Commissioner John Hellerstedt, Commissioner of Health, for the state of Texas has asked and appointed me to this position with your permission, Judge. Well, first of all, congratulations, Sandy. That That is uh, certainly a, an honor for them to have chosen to do that. I have a motion to approve. Second. Second. All I'm in sorry. favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Judge. Item uh, B is requesting approval to submit revised budgets to the Department of State Health Services to realign availability of funds for the following grant programs. There's several grants that are listed on the agenda, sir. I'm not gonna go through each of them, but requesting that approval. And then item two is requesting approval to request a non-cost extension for the COVID-19 response grant programs to run until March 20, March 15, 2023. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Aye. Thank you for that. Item C is requesting approval to submit the renewal grant application and budget for the CPS Hazards FY23 grant program. The award amount is $592,548. And the program period is from July 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023. This program requires a 10% cash match and that's part of our budget op uh, budget programming with the budget officer. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> Item D, sir, is requesting approval of certification of revenues in the amount of $437,771 as approved by the county auditor for the Tuberculosis Prevention Control Fund FY22 grant program and appropriations of the same, an appropriation of the local match in the amount of $87,554, sir. This is our TV program. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. So this next item is a, it's, it's a yearly report that we get done. I have some presenters that are gonna present briefly, uh, Dr. Nelson and Dr. Allegro, who are, Allegra, who are part of UTRG Medical School, but I wanna read the item first. Uh, present, uh, pursuant to chapter 465, local drug and alcohol education program, section 465.003, Presentation on the Hidalgo County Health and Human Services Drug and Alcohol Abuse Advisory Commission's activities. As per statute, we have an annual report uh, in regards to the John Austin Benya. It's an agreement we have with UTRGV and providing support services for alcohol and drug abuse along with other services for the community. And uh, this is uh, an annual report that comes through usually in December, but we uh, a conflicting schedule uh, made it happen the first week of January, sir. So I have Dr. Nelson on the phone and Dr. Allegra on the correction on Zoom and Dr. Allegra on Zoom. Dr. Nelson, go ahead. Hi, thank you very much, uh, commissioners. I am so appreciative of you allowing us to present this report again. Uh, and thank you for your support of UTRGV, uh, our community and UTRGV School of Medicine, and for also support of this program. I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Allegre uh, to explain, you should have a handout uh, in front of you that explains a little bit about our program. We are, have continued to be uh, strongly impacted by COVID. 
uh, and uh, we are sort of regrouping from the 2020 uh, surge, and now we're in it again, of course. So it really impacts. We have really gone to telemedicine. Uh, the adolescents seem to like that much better. Uh, and so, uh, Dr. Legre. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And I reinforce what Dr. Nelson was saying, and thank you for your support for the institution and, and to this program. And, um, and yeah, there's, as, as you all know, these times have been a little bit limiting in how services are are being delivered, but we're still continuing to deliver serv services via telemedicine. We serve uh, mostly teenagers and um, our social workers have continued and you, you have the numbers in, in, the, in the handout. Um, they're still, um, working every day to to serve this this population and um, with their continued support we'd like to uh, keep keep doing this uh, hopefully uh, regaining some of the capabilities that we had before um, COVID started limiting us but uh, we'll continue um, working however possible to keep serving this population if allowed thank you uh, we're continuing to expand, as Dr. Legre said, and uh, offering more services. We're looking at some parenting centering services, which would bring the entire family in because we feel like uh, one, or, uh, one or two or multiple um, telehealth visits for psychological and mental health and drug services are not enough without really involving the entire family. This is a family affair. Uh, and so we uh, beg your support for continuing in this program. Thank you very much for our presentation. Doctor, do uh, you have any limitations of the services you can provide because of funding or lack of funding? I'm sorry, I didn't understand you, Judge. Do you have any limitations in providing services to those that need the services because of lack of funding? Uh, no, we uh, currently w we do not. Uh, we have had uh, renewal of these services with uh, Methodist Healthcare Ministries for the coming year. Uh, we're excited about that again, that we've uh, uh, been funded by them. We're looking to um, offer some additional grant requests uh, to several uh, philanthropic uh, organizations to increase our funding as well. At this point, uh, our doors are wide open. Thank you. Judge, this is Eddie Olivares. Uh, one of the things that I know we've discussed uh, in regard to substance abuse and mental health support, I'm working closely with Mr. Cruz and Mrs. Walpa, Ms. Walpa at uh, Budget Office. And we've actually discussed some preliminary thoughts with Dr. Nelson in regards to expanding services of John Austin Pena in dealing with the mental health substance abuse population uh, but I'm working through Ms. Walpa and Mr. Cruz, and of course UTRGV on that, sir, with uh, with the guidance from Commissioner's Court. Thank you. That's my uh, that's our annual report, sir. Uh, just do, you might want to take action just so we could have it on record that it was approved. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion aye. carries. Thank you very much, and we enjoy and and appreciate very much our relationship with UTRGV. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Longoria, Community Service Agency 11A. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Item 11A is discussion, consideration, and possible action to approve the Community Services Block Grant Disaster Relief Supplemental Fund Stage 3 Contract Number 61210003565 for fiscal year 2021 from the Texas Department of Housing and Community Affairs with authorization for Jaime Longoria to electronically sign any and all pertinent documents. Judge and commissioners, this is a, a, a $500,000 grant that is uh, earmarked for, for folks that were affected by the 2019 disaster. It's a continue, it's actually a stage three of, of these funds that are available for, for those that were affected by the 2019, uh, I believe it was disaster number 4454 that happened in the Monte Alto uh, kind of Mercedes area. It was a flood and a windstorm. Asking for authorization to, to so accept those funds. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion aye. carries. Secondly, Judge, I just wanted to take this time to, to thank you and, and the commissioners for, for
for the announcements that they've made regarding the Texas Homeowner Assistance Fund. Uh, as you know, those, uh, that's a fund that's designed uh, uh, some funds that are available to assist families who uh, are needing help with their property taxes, delinquent property taxes, or their delinquent mortgages. Uh, folks that are interested in that can go to the Texas Homeowner Assistance dot com website uh, and I certainly thank you all for, for getting the word out on that. Hey Jaime have you tried it? I, I know I got a comment from somebody this morning from yesterday that they jumped on and they, they weren't able to use the site. Yeah, yes sir we've, we've uh, actually we're serving as the pilot we're one of three counties uh, across the state that are a pilot for, for a month. Uh, we have had uh, applicants that have been on and uh, we've there's there have been some some and we've uh, contacted the agency about that and uh, we're working very closely with the agency that's administering these funds. But you've had some successes already. Yes, sir. We've okay. had, uh, we actually had uh, uh, an elderly, elderly person that received a call from the caseworker regarding delinquent property taxes. And, uh, you know, keep in mind, this is, uh, this is for families that may be five, 10 years behind on property taxes. Oftentimes they're the elderly. So we want to make sure that, uh, that it's as easy as we can possibly make it for families to apply. Uh, and we have had some success. Yes, sir. Awesome. Thank you. Certainly, if you, you're welcome to give me a contact number, Commissioner, and I'd be willing to work with that family. I just, and, had, uh, I, I just asked them to try it again and okay. let me know if they couldn't, deal. couldn't access it. I, I, I'm going to send you a contact with your permission, number. I'd like to congratulate everybody in the whole world except the... Uh, the Alabama Crimson Tide fans of uh, Raul Sassine for uh, yesterday's uh, Georgia victory. So a little uh, interdepartmental rivalry there. So uh, congratulations I mean, to the I mean, you, you had a lot of merit points. You just lost it with that, with that statement over there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're Longhorns and Aggies over here. Uh, okay. Thank you, sir. Item 12, Alex Alexis Administration, Yvonne Ramon. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioners. Yvonne Ramon with item 12A, discussion on election updates. I have quite a bit of information, so please ask me any questions that you may have. I'll try my best to be clear and to the point. I'd like to start off with uh, just your general voter eligibility to be able to register to vote in Texas. You must be a U.S. citizen. You must be a resident of the county in which you want to vote in. Uh, I think it's important to clear that as a resident, uh, it means to be a U.S. citizen that lives in the county in which you wish to vote, not uh, the same as having a residency visa. We have quite a few people that register because they said, well, I'm, I have a, a residency visa. No, it means resident as being a U.S. citizen that lives in the county, in this case would be Hidalgo County, you must be 18 years old or register to vote at 17 years and 10 months. You're able to do that. You're not a convicted felon unless, of course, your sentence is completed. That means it includes any probation, any parole, anything. Uh, your sentence is completed and you're not declared mentally incapacitated by a court of law. So it's important that if a person has a question, can I register to vote? Here comes our primary. Please call our office at 318-2570. Now, at this point, we are in the midst of almost final, finalizing our preparation of a massive mail-out. Now, what is a massive mail-out? Well, every two years, every registered active voter receives a new voter certificate. This year, the voter certificate is a light blue color and it will be good starting already the first day of January in 22, and it will expire uh, on the last day, the 31st of December of 2023. Now, why did I say registered active? Because as we prepared for this massive mail out, we have 402,418 registered voters. But of those registered voters, we've got 20,283 that are under suspense mode. Those are registered voters, but they're not active voters because they're under suspense, not suspension, they're active. They're, I'm sorry, they're registered, but under suspense. That means that when they, this person's registered and we mailed them their voter certificate, it was returned to our office undeliverable. For whatever reason, it didn't make it to their home. That automatically, through the law of Texas, election law of Texas puts you under a suspense mode. That means that if you head out to vote 
during this primary, you have to fill out what is called a statement of residence before you're allowed to go to the machine, to get your paper ballot and vote. So what I suggest is if you didn't get, uh, two years ago, you didn't get your certificate, then if by the end of this month, you don't receive a light blue voter certificate, call our office, get everything straightened out before you head out to vote because uh, you will eliminate long lines, you will eliminate vote time, uh, waiting to vote. And uh, the best thing to do is to be clear. <laughs> why did I not get the last voter certificate and why did I not get this voter certificate? Let's find out, find out why <laughs> there's 20,283 people out there that are under suspense mode. You all know that uh, we uh, are under redistricting. We uh, moved lines, we changed voter uh, precinct numbers and possibly your, your jurisdictions as far as who are qualified to vote for. So when you do receive your new certificate, make sure you look at it. Is it the same precinct? Did my precinct change? What changed on the certificate? And if you have any questions, by all means, please call and ask because there were lines moved and there were uh, precincts changed. Now, what happens if you get a certificate, but it's not yours? Okay, I was talking about those that didn't get a certificate. Now, let's say you get one, but it's not yours, uh, or you have a certificate in hand of someone who has passed away. Please, please, please do not throw the certificate away. Do not toss it in a drawer. This is the way that we keep up with changes on our voter database through your information. So what is it that you can do? Number one is to look at that certificate and on the back side, for example, you receive one, the person does not live there, simply write that on the back, person does not live here. And you can either toss it in the mail at no cost to you, there's no charge as far as a voter having to put a stamp on it, or come by the office at uh, 213 South Plaster Boulevard and drop it off and say, I received this one, the person does not live there. If it is the next of kin uh, person that passed away, you can write that on the back and sign it, or you can send us a, a, a death certificate. You can call us, you can come by the office, but by all means, do not toss these uh, certificates in a drawer or throw them away because they need to be updated. And this is the way we update. So once again, write a message on the back, either place it in the mail, call us, come by the office, but do not discard these voter certificates that are not yours. So remember, if by the end of January, you do not receive your new light blue voter certificate, it's time to call the office and it's time to get this cleared up before you get out to vote. Uh, that's all I have on that. Any quick questions before I proceed? Okay, so the next thing I want to try to quickly let you all know, because this is already affecting our candidates uh, and that, that are used to coming by our office. Uh, they're gonna be on the primary ballot and they're used to coming by our office and we give them a stack of applications for ballot by mail. Well, guess what? I can no longer do that. My office staff can no longer do that. Why? Because under the new laws, any election official can be charged with a felony and I can face up to two years in jail for giving out unsolicited mail ballot applications even to voters who qualify. So we can no longer solicit the submission of an application from a voter who didn't ask for it. So if you know of anyone that needs an application to vote by mail, you need to have them call our office and they need to request them themselves. Now, the good thing is that campaigns and candidates are not subject to these same restrictions. Campaigns and candidates are able to send out voter uh, ballot by mail applications, even to those who didn't request. So where do they get these applications when before they used to get them from my office? Well, you can call the Secretary of State's office at 1-800-252-8683 and request that they send you applications, or you can go on our website and you can download this application yourself and make copies. And talking about making a copy, when someone does call and ask for this application, we are gonna send them a copy. The Secretary of State just a few weeks ago approved the final changes on the application for ballot by mail. Our uh, request is at the printers right now. So all we have 
are copies that we can make and so send to the voters who request one. Now, please, if you find yourself with an old application for ballot by mail, do not use it because there are many changes and I won't go over all of them right now because it's too much. But the one main important thing is that now on this new application, which is on our website, you must now send the uh, identification it's on the front part of it, on the right-hand side, it says you must provide one of the following numbers, either your Texas driver's license or your last four digits of your social security. And it explains other IDs, but look, this is the catch. When that application arrives at our office, we now have to check that ID against your voter registration record. I'm not talking about the application to vote by mail. I'm talking about your voter registration uh, application. I was 18 years old when I registered. Do you remember what ID you used? If you don't, the best thing to do is call our office, 318-2570 and ask for help. I'm about to fill out my application for ballot by mail. Can someone please help me to see what ID I used? Because if it doesn't match, this is gonna be a rejected application. So if you registered with your Texas driver's license, then you must use your Texas driver's license on this application for ballot by mail. If you use another, you are in the midst of having a rejected ballot. Now, the good thing is if we do this timely, if we start right now, my office has the opportunity to contact you and have you correct it. So please, please, everything is changing. The laws are changing. They're a bit confusing, but the best thing to do is to call our office and ask for help so that we make sure that every person that qualifies to vote by mail doesn't get a rejected application so late that they're not able then to submit a corrected application in a timely manner. So that's just a little bit of the changes on application for ballot by mail, but just quickly download the application on, from our website. Do not use an old application. Call our office and make sure that you are using the correct ID from when you registered to vote, whenever that was, and that ID must be on your application for ballot by mail. Does that make sense? Anybody have any quick questions? I know it's a lot. Okay, so next I just wanted to update you all on one of the items that I will read out and that's about our retrofit. Now, uh, this court is, is going to proceed with uh, the necessary steps in uh, converting our uh, electronic DRE, which is the, the uh, tablet that people were using in Hidalgo County to vote, where now they're going to become simply marking devices and now we're going to have scanners that will be utilized in every polling location in order to count your ballot that was casted. So basically we're still waiting for some of this equipment to come back to our office. We have um, 250 scanners that were ordered and we've received 194. We have 1,105 voter screens that were tabulators and now they're being retrofit to what are called marking devices and we still have 108 that we're waiting for. So on down the line, we're in the midst of receiving this retrofitted converted equipment back in our office. And once we do, we have to start the, the very, very important step of testing and accepting, making sure that all the equipment is working correctly. And once we do that, we will be emailing you, we will be updating you, we will be sending press releases out because then is when we will begin the, the very important uh, training of our community. We wanna make sure that we have these machines out, let's say at commissioner's court and that people have an opportunity to view them and use them. The good thing is that they're the same as they've always been, except now you will have a, uh, a ballot eight and a half by 11 that must be submitted and, and put into the marking device. Your selected um, uh, choices will then be printed on this ballot, which will then be walked over to what I explained as a scanner. At that point, this paper ballot will be fit into, fed into a scanner and your ballot will then be cast. So as I said, we're as soon as we get all the equipment, we'll start all the training and we'll make sure that our county is ready for what is about to uh, become now uh, a hybrid 
a paper ballot uh, county that uh, is ready for the primary. And so let me make sure that that's all I have uh, for update. And that is, before I start on my agenda item B, does anyone have a question for me? Okay, thank you. Remember, call our office 318-2570, come by our office at 213 South Closeter Boulevard and ask, ask, ask any questions before you submit your application for ballot by mail or before you head out to vote and make sure to be looking out for your new voter certificate. Okay, item B, voting equipment retrofit. Number one, approval of resolution in support of the reimbursement for auditable voting machines grant awarded by the Texas Secretary of State with authority for Commissioner's Court governing body to execute resolution. And I'll quickly read that. Resolution in support of grant reimbursement for the auditable voting machines. Whereas, Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court agrees that the expenditure of the funds will be in accordance with applicable federal and state law, any agreement between Hidalgo County and the State of Texas Office of the Secretary of State as authorized under section 129.003 of the Texas Election Code and in consultation and agreement with the county election officials as defined in sections 12.001 and 31.091 of the Texas Election Code and whereas Hidalgo County Commissioner Court agrees claims against the fund shall be audited and approved in the same manner as other claims against the county before they are paid and Whereas Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court agrees that it will not consider the availability of the, uh, the funds in adopting the county budget. And whereas Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court agrees that in the event of loss, misuse, or non-compliance pursuant to any agreement with the Secretary of State, Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court assures that the funds will be returned to the office of the Secretary of State in full. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Hidalgo County Commissioners approves this resolution in support of the grant reimbursement for the auditable voting machines this 11th day of January, 2022. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number three, approval of certification of revenues as certified by the County Auditor in relation to the reimbursement for auditable voting machines grant award in the amount of $4,999,482.18 and appropriation of same. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number four, approval to rescind order and emergency appropriation from the general fund unassigned fund balance under agenda item number 82349 approved by Commissioner's Court on September the 21st, 2021 in relation to retrofitting of voting equipment. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, thank you very much for all that. Now I'll go to number C. In accordance with Hidalgo County Civil Service Commission rules, discussion and consideration and approval to pay extra duty hours worked by Hidalgo County employees in preparation for local county, state, federal, and runoff elections held throughout 2022. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. The motion carries. And the last item is D, requesting approval to accept and to have county judge approve HAVA election security grant extension. The purpose of the amendment is to add a no cost extension to include a revised termination date of December 31st, 2022. And that's the election security grant, which has been on our books for a year and it's being extended for another year. Uh, and that's what this is for. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank Juan. you very much. Thank I know you. it was a lot. I will be sending you all emails with what I've discussed this time and last time, and there will be more coming. As you all know, there are so many changes and we want to make sure that everyone is understanding of all these election law changes and processes, procedures, forms. Uh, I think I, uh, not I think, I know I heard the head of legal say that every single election form has a change. 
uh, that passed throughout this uh, first, second, and third legislative session. So there will be a lot of changes, and I thank you for your patience and your understanding. Thank Ms. you. Ramon, Ms. Ramon, I just want yes. to check with you. I think we skipped item B2. Approval was, was had on number one, which was the Yeah, I thought you had taken that, but yeah. Resolution. I think you need to go back and do B2. Okay, item do B2. I read again, or you just approve? You can approve. You went from two. one to three. Right. So I make a motion to approve uh, item two as, as agreed on the agenda. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Before Thank we you. go to item 13A, I see Commissioner Fuentes is lonely over there, not, not here. Let's all say hi to him. Hi, Commissioner. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Hey, Commissioner, you need some books. Safe. You need some books or something for your show. Uh, it's, it's on your desk. <laughs> okay, item 13A. Good morning. Uh, this is Linda Fong for the Auditor's Office. Morning. Item 13. Item 13A is discussion, consideration, and approval for the County Auditor's Office to conduct an audit of the Chapter 59 Asset Forfeiture Report prepared by the Hidalgo County. Uh, Sheriff's Office, Haida, Constable Precinct 1, Constable Precinct 2, Constable Precinct 3, Constable Precinct 4, Constable Precinct 5, and Adobo County Fire Marshal for fiscal year 2021, and the District Attorney's Office for fiscal year 2022, pursuant to Chapter 59 Asset Forfeiture Report requirements. So moved. So moved. Second. I have a motion to second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Commission two. Requesting approval to accept a revised counter offer to purchase a tract of land known as parcel one associated with the precinct two Nolana Loop Road project from FM fourteen twenty six to FM nine oh seven with authority for the county judge to sign the administrative evaluation and approval form. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Commissioner Jadel. Uh, 15A, a request in approval to accept Connor offer to purchase a tract of land known as Parcel 12 associated with a Precinct 3 Liberty Road Phase 2 Project Mile 3 to FM 2221, right away CSJ uh, 0921-02-364, with authority for the county judge to sign the administrative evaluation and approval form. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Commissioner Tolles. Yes, sir. Item 16A, uh, requesting approval of the certification of revenue as certified by county auditor in the amount of $1,223,357 and appropriation of the same, Memorial Park, Sunflower. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Cruz, 17A. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Sergio Cruz, Department of Budget and Management. Item 17A, discussion, consideration, and approval of contribution and aid of construction agreement for the electric distribution service with AEP for the installation of street lights for the Inca and the Southside Village subdivisions. Recommend approval. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 17B1, discussion, consideration, and action to approve the use of ARPA relief funds uh, for the following stormwater projects uh, as listed on the agenda under the Hidalgo County American Rescue Plan Act stormwater system improvement program. We recommend approval of the eight projects listed. Motion to approve uh, B1 through 8. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 17C1 is approval to undesignate funds for fiscal year 22 in the amount of $1,704,781 for expenditures related to the 1115 waiver program and appropriation of the same. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 17C2 is approval of, 20, of fiscal year 22 appropriation of funds into refunding bonds 2015, refunding bonds 2019, and certificates of obligations uh, series 2021 in the amount of $1,082,598.35. Uh, these are to fund uh, bond principal, bond interest, and agent fees. You recommend approval. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, <clears throat> and finally, item 17C3. There's approval of 2022 appropriation of funds uh, for the following special uh, purpose budgets as listed on the agendas uh, listed from A through E. We recommend approval. Motion so to approve. Second. 
We have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Thank you. Mr. Belmadas, we uh, welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Judge. Uh, good morning, Judge Commissioners. Eduardo Belmadas with the Purchasing Department. Mr. Belmadas, hey. see you. Hey. Mr. Belmadas. Yes. Could you uh, move your camera down? It's pointed at the ceiling, sir. Sorry about that. Okay, well, that's fine. We'll take care of it for the next court session. Mr. Belmares? Yes. Go, I'm go here. On. We'll take Sorry care of it for the next court session. Go ahead, sir. There you go. Okay. There you go. There you go. Okay, thank you. A1, uh, presentation of scoring grid for the purpose of ranking by HCC of the participating firms to Hidalgo County Project Specific for Traffic Engineering Consulting and other services for the new Hidalgo County Courthouse. Uh, the ranking in the following order, Consor Engineers LLC, 467, Cobb Family and Associates, 465, and Ergonomic Transportation Solutions, Inc., uh, 437. Say it again. Sorry. Ranking in the following order, Consor Engineers, 467, Cobb, Fenley and Associates, 465, and Ergonomic Transportation Solutions, Inc., 437. This is, this is, was my understanding that we were going to use a firm that had some familiarity with the courthouse square? That would be Etsy Ergonomic Transportation Solutions. They were involved in the previous uh, an analysis that was done. Um, they they weren't on here. Yes, they are. They were ranked at four thirty seven. I can't, I can't agree with this because this Etsy did all the work uh, on the original design and then they're, they're the ones that have the most knowledge on adding this additional, additional work. So I'm not sure why it was ranked this way, but I mean. Who was the evaluation? If sorry? We, that wasn't revealed to the evaluation team. I'm sorry? Perhaps that wasn't revealed to the evaluation team. She said, perhaps. It yeah, wasn't. no, I, I, I heard her. You can take no. I just know it's going to make it's going to make things more complicated. You're familiar with this, Bobby? Yes, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Madres, what is the, What's the time frame or time? Uh, is there any uh, uh, time limitation that if we were to take uh, no action, so we can uh, relook at this uh, process and the uh, the uh, the parameters that were set forth for the committee uh, would uh, would the uh, I think y'all need to discuss it in Visa, and then, and if, then this is, if this works, bring it back. But if it doesn't, okay. we need to come up with a better plan. So we'll we'll we'll, um, uh, we'll recommend no action today, and then we'll we'll have a discussion, and then we'll bring it back at the next court session, Commissioner. I appreciate it. Okay, next item. Next item. Item. 18A2, requesting approval of the following contract allowance expenditure in connection with construction of the Hidalgo County Courthouse from the contracted vendor Mervani, Texas, Inc. in the amount of 88,269. This is for nine exterior, uh, exterior LED handrails and associated electrical work. So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 18. To be requested authority for county judge and or applicable owner designated representative to sign required documents. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item uh, three, presentation of qualified sole response received from STX Nighttime Vending Company LLC 
for the purpose of award of contracts through RFB title vending machine services subject to compliance with 1295. This is a three year contract with two one year renewals. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion, motion carries. Item uh, B, 18B1, approval to purchase fleet safety equipment through our membership with Viveboard in the total amount of 1,804.04. The vendor would be South Texas Communications. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Item B2, requested authority to purchase vehicle equipment with awarded by board vendor Donna Safety Supply Inc. in the amount of 1,780. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B3, requested authority to purchase turnkey services, equipment, accessories, and, and installation for 2022 Ford at 150 with South Texas Communications Inc. through county contract E-2100. 675-08-24. Contract expires August 12, 2022. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. The motion carries. Item B, 3B, requesting authority to purchase turnkey services. Again, to include equipment, accessories, and installation for the uh, 2022 Ford Explorer with American audio alarm and tent signs through open market in the total amount of 3,315 with authority for county judge or doesn't need to sign. Motion Subject to, to 1295 form. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item four, requesting approval contract documents to both responsive and responsible qualified vendors submitted the lowest bid and meeting all specifications for lubricants, grease, oil, hydraulic fluid, empty freeze products via RFB 2021-135-12-08-ABV. Following are Argandewi Oil Company LTD and Key Performance Petroleum. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item five, requested approval to purchase the following vehicles listed herein for the Sheriff's Office from Sales B Ford LLC through our membership participation with Goodbye Cooperative Purchasing Program, contract number 22-22-8F000. Following our vehicles, Ford Explorer 2022, Ford Escape 2022, and Ford F-150 2022 in the amount of 30,817, 23,997.50, and 40,297. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item C1, pursuant to Texas LGC chapter section 263.151, 2BCD, and 263.152A2, action to declare two 2014 CAT dump trucks and one, 20, uh, one uh, 2002 oil distribution truck as surplus, detailed and described and exhibit attached herein for the purpose of disposition of the three units for use as trade-ins toward the acquisition of two dump trucks and one oil distribution truck, including the removal of said assets from the inventory list once transaction is completed. So moved. Second. We have a motion and second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C, uh, 1B, approval to purchase the two 2022 Peterbilt 348 locane dump truck M1 2021 Roscoe Maximizer 3 oil distributor through the county's membership participation with Purchasing Cooperative of America under contract PCA OD-328-20, which expires August 17, 2025. Total amount is 476,750 for all three pieces of equipment. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item D1, requesting approval to enter into an interlocal cooperation agreement between Hidalgo County and Hidalgo County Drainage District Number 1, pursuant to the Interlocal Cooperation Act, Texas Government Code 791, for engineering services required for the J.R. Milo Ponce Park in Precinct 4, subject to final legal review. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. 
D2, requesting approval to purchase parts and recreation equipment and installation for six playscapes through Byboard Co-op, contract number 592-19, awarded vendor park place recreation designs in the amount total of 363,614.67 for JR Milo Ponce Park, increasing four subject to pending required documentation. Pending documentation would be the payment and performance bonds. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D3, requesting approval change order number two to contract C-21-008-06-25 with Texas Cordia Construction LLC for North Alamo Road realignment and precinct four at no additional cost subject to compliance with form 1295. Motion to approve. All in favor. Second. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion to second to approve. All in favor say aye. Aye. The motion carries. Thank you. Item E1, presentation of qualified solar <coughs> funds received from Terra Firma Materials LLC for the, purchase, for the purpose of award contract through RFP title Lime Road Materials and Services, contract 21-144-01-11, subject to compliance with requested 1295 form. Uh, this would be a, on an as needed basis turnkey uh, delivery as well. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 1A, requesting exemption from competitive procurement requirements pursuant to Texas Local Government Code 262.024A12 attached herein, an item that must be purchased in case of public calamity. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B, request by Hidalgo County Department and Health Human Services to purchase 152 ID now COVID testing kits from Abbott Rapid DX North America LLC in the total amount of 149,568. A total of uh, 152 cases at 984 per case. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Judge Commissioners, with your permission, um, item 19, uh, item 19A, 1, 2, and 3, there's no action to be taken this week. Item 19B, uh, uh, Commissioner Fuentes, is his reappointment of board member to the Hidalgo County Regional Mo Mobility Authority for Precinct 1. Commissioner? Yes, sir. I'm going to reappoint as Jr. Okay. Second. Or I make a motion to approve the nominations. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C, Judge Commissioners, is our yearly interlocal uh, library agreements between Hidalgo County and the following cities. It would be Alamo, Donna, Edinburgh, Elsa, Hidalgo, La Jolla, McCallum, Mercedes, Mission, Benitez, Far, San Juan, and Westlaco. Motion approved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D, uh, E, F, and G are related in request and action. These are our uh, annual contract contributions. First one is approval of the 2022 Museum Funding Agreement between Hidalgo County and the Museum of South Texas History in the amount of $460,000. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion aye. carries. Second is the 2022 Museum Funding Agreement between the County of Hidalgo and Donna Hooks Fletcher Museum in the amount of $10,000. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> Item F is the 2022 Museum Funding Agreement between Hidalgo County and the Mission Historical Museum in the amount of $10,000. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. And item G is approval of the 2022 Museum Funding Agreement between Hidalgo County and McAllen Heritage Center in the amount of $10,000. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion aye. carried. Item H, Judge Commissioners, will be taking no action. Item 20, uh, uh, Judge Commissioners, I'm requesting to go to closed session and uh, we'll take up item 20 and all uh, balance of uh, agenda items. Okay, pursuant to chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code under section 551.072, seven, excuse me, 71072, uh, 074, and 087 would be retired to closed session to discuss those items and the action items will be taken will be taken in open session when we return. I have a motion to do so. Motion so made. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. It's 1147 a.m. Okay, we're back from closed session and we do have some action items. Thank you, Judge. Commissioners, 
So um, under open session, we have a real estate acquisition appropriation for same. There's no specific action to be taken. Pending and or potential litigation, item 23B, no action to be taken. 23C, discussion, consideration, and possible action regarding response to public health emergency. Judge Commissioners, I will refer, I will refer back to item 20 in a couple minutes. Item 23D, civil action number 722CV00003, uh, Linda Villarreal and Ramon Moya versus County uh, and the Sheriff's Office. Judge Commissioners, I'd like to refer back to item 22. Item 22 is uh, requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code Section 2620484, a professional service for the provision of legal services representation in connection with litigation. I have a motion to that effect. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item 22B, engagement with the firm of Preston Henriksen for the provision of legal services representation in connection with litigation and authority to submit letter of engagement subject to compliance with House Bill 1295, specific to open session item 23D, civil action number 722CV00003, Linda Villarreal and Ramon Moya versus County and Sheriff's Office. I could have a motion to that effect. Motion so to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item 23E, claim of Phoenix lost control. Judge Commissioners, I'd like settlement authority to make $2,599. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item 23F, claim of Ashley Del Villar. Judge Commissioners, I'd like settlement authority to make an offer in the amount of $155. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 23G, claim of uh, Eileen uh, Reta Cordoba. Judge Commissioners, I'd like settlement authority to make an offer in the amount of $332.28. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. For the record, there is no action on item 24, closed session. There's no need to go back. And item 25, no action, which would be the open session after closed session. So, Judge Commissioners, I'd like to refer back. Uh, I'd like to refer back to item 20. Discussion, consideration, possible action regarding A, County Response to Disaster Health Emergency 1, CARES Act, and American Rescue Plan Acts Fund. There is no specific action to be taken. There was some general action taken on the regular agenda. Item B, measures necessary to preserve public health and safety. Again, there was some general action taken by Commissioner's Court today. Item C, direction regarding county government operations, including but not limited to essential functions. Judge Commissioners, we continue as we have done for quite some time, we continue to work with the health department, our human resource department, our facilities management department uh, in addressing any and all matters con um, concerning the COVID and COVID-19 variations. Uh, our uh, health and safety of our residents doing business with the Hale County is first and foremost, as well as our health and safety of our employees that provide that valuable service. So Judge Commissioners, um, we have adjournment. I have a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Yes, be safe.